Hi everyone and welcome to this interview. I'm your host, Sunny Gigi, and it's my pleasure to introduce our special guest. Today we have Elhanan. He was born and raised in Haiti, where he was surrounded by Christianity. He was introduced to Judaism by his cousin, where he not only found Rabbi Reuven, but also his wife. Elhanan now studies Torah diligently every day with his chavuta, his brother Natanel, who we will soon meet in another podcast. We're excited to have him here with us today to share his insights and experiences. So without further ado, let's dive into the conversation. So today we have El Sanan. El Sanan, how are you today? Good, how are you? Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Like, what was it like growing up? Uh, your family life in general? You know, what's your background? What's your story? Well, I grew up in the islands. I'm from Haiti. And uh, back there, it's the Christianity or the other not so good stuff. And uh, I had a pretty normal um, upbringing to say. It's uh, in the beginning, I didn't live with my father because he already moved to America before I was born. So I grew up with my mom and then my aunties and stuff like that. So growing up as a child, it was just um, I grew up with a lot of uh, cousins. And it was also my brother. So it's a uh, family was always the uh, together family, happy, enjoying uh, every moment. So it's not like we were, we were poor, we were rich, we lived with whatever we had. And um, it was good for us. And um, well, Kashem, we survived and everything was uh, good. We never got into trouble. That's one of the things growing up, my parents and my, uh, my family, they were like, we're not trouble family. Or... Uh, your previous cousins didn't get into trouble. Your parents didn't get into trouble. So you're not going to be the generation that's going to get into trouble. Go hang out with the one crowd and bring the bad name to the family. So there was that aspect of like, there was a certain um, uh, pedestal to say that uh, you had to not dirty your family's name. You had to always present yourself in a way that would be respectable and uh, acceptable by society. So as I grown up, I never hang out with the wrong crowd. And um, we were living in neighborhoods where there were kids like they would be doing bad things. Or some of them were just like playing around, just uh, playing soccer or whatever. I was that kid that was just standing in the balcony and just looking at everyone playing. And then um, I was not allowed to play with the other kids in the neighborhood. So we lived there for a while, and a lot of kids didn't know me. They saw me from up there, but uh, they didn't know me. They didn't know my name or anything. So that was that type of life I had. So I guess because of that, there was a lot of things I was never into or peer pressured into. But one thing that um, being in the islands, you have to go to church, and that's what people do. So at least it wasn't the other even worse stuff. So... I mean, people go to church, and you were a kid, they take you to church, and you go to church. But one thing I realized is, like, going to church, like, okay, kids never want to go places. They want to stay home and do stuff. So I never wanted to go there, and I've never got involved into any of the of the things that were doing there. So there were programs and different things. I was never that kid that would go to all of them. So you can say I missed out on some stuff because they had some fun stuff to say. But because they'll go out on outings and things like that, but uh, I never went. So one thing that was always uh, since growing up, I always uh, like that was watching TV. So I either stay home and watch TV, then uh, have to go out and then with people and then do all this other stuff. So I guess that saved me in a way that I never got involved into church. And as growing up, we go when you were older enough not to go sometimes. They'll be like, why are you not going? I'm like, oh, okay, I'm coming later. You'll come late and all this stuff. So that was the thing. Then as I got older and older and moved here, um, church got less and less exciting, not wanting to go except for going and see friends, whatever friends you have there and talk, hang out. And then it was not about the things that were happening in there that was um, that brought me there. So as I got older and and uh, I was able to make my own decisions and uh, started learning with my um, my cousin. And then uh, he 
got into it uh, yet to just me and my brother to Judaism because he already was in there. And then uh, little by little, he started telling us different things about the New Testament, the falseness of it and everything else. Then started from there. And then uh, little by little, we added on to our knowledge. And uh, now I'm here. So your your cousin was already like looking into Judaism and uh, and just started experimenting with that, or yeah, he was um he was always that guy that um you will say uh not a researcher but someone who's always in is into different things. He's a very smart because he's a very smart man, so he's always looking into different things. And uh, since he's a professor. I guess when he came here, he met different people, worked at different schools. And uh, I guess uh, one of the schools that he worked at uh, was a Jewish school. I'm not sure if it was Orthodox, Martin Orthodox, whatever it was. Um, he worked at one of those, I guess. Maybe he met some people and things like that, started talking. Then mm -hmm. uh, that was way before we came here. So that was like years before like we knew that um, he knew about this stuff. So when we finally came here, and um, we started, we met him again, and then uh, we started talking about different things, and this came up, and uh, and that's how we started um, into Judaism. Did you guys move here to to Florida because he moved here? No. Like, did he convince you guys to come over here? No, actually, when, so, uh, with the family tree, my, my, bro uh, my dad's brother, his older brother came here first, I believe. And then uh, probably a few years later, my brother moved to America. So I would say it's even, so my dad moved about 30, 32 years ago. So when my dad moved and uh, later on, he, uh, my uncle brought his kids here. So that was probably, I would say maybe 10 years before we came, I will say probably 10 years before we came. So we didn't see them for a long time. So when we came here, I guess my brother, my dad's brother and my dad, they moved to Florida. Just, it was just like, that's the place they were in. So when we moved here, they were already here. So we're still in the same neighborhood. So the family, they kind of stayed together, so to say. But one of my uncles did go to Connecticut, but like my dad and my, his other brother, they stayed here in Florida. So, so that's where we came. Baruch Hashem. Okay, so you were born and raised in Haiti. Uh, a little while after, now you're in Florida. At what point, or how how did you find the organization or the rabbi? So, like that thing, cousin. When whenever we were talking, and they would, we would talk about religion, different things, charity, falsehood, and everything. So, and one thing he always mentioned is Rabbi Mizrahi. So, you know, quote different things about Rabbi Mizrahi and talk about him. And then, um, I guess one of the days we we'll, we I looked it up on YouTube, and uh, it came um, it came up. Then I believe one of those lectures that came up was the lecture with where he introduced Rabbi Mizrahi, uh, Rabbi Ruben. <laughs> so and in, uh, in that case, I watched that lecture. But also, that same cousin, his brother, was also into religion, and little that I know that he already converted and already did the process, and he was following Rabbi Ruben. So after that time when he introduced it, and then suggestions happened, and then on YouTube it was the Rabbi Ruben Shio. And then I listened, and I was listening, and then by some coincidence, I don't know how I heard it, I heard my uh, Betsala, my other cousin, I heard his voice asking a question. I was like, wait, is that Betsala? I rewinded, <laughs> he's listening again. I, was, I'm, I told my brother, can you hear that? Is that Betsala? Then I try to remember one one time I met him uh, at his brother's house. We were talking, and he was saying, "Oh, his rabbi went through a lot. His rabbi is, is um, Rabbi Ruben." But I didn't really, I didn't connect the 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 two to see if it's, that was the person that he was talking about. And he had the CDs and stuff. And then when I finally put it together, I was like, "Wait, that's him. That's the rabbi he was talking about." And then uh, when I heard him in that shiur. And I looked up to see where the shield was, and then it was at the Breslau Center. And then, um, okay, one of those days, I was like, okay, I'm going to get up and go. I've heard about it a lot. I watched that lecture. I heard a few other lectures, and I was like, okay, let me get up and go. 
know where I decided to go. I just like, it was a surprise to me that moment also. So it was uh, crazy. It was something new and uh, I didn't know I was going to expect. So, but I knew it was there. So I went. So at least I know somebody there. So you were listening to Rabbi Mizrahi's lecture where it introduced Rabbi Rubin. You clicked on his video and then you went through the uh, rabbit hole of uh, yeah, the, uh, yeah. lectures that Rabbi Rubin had. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, yeah. Was that was the lecture that kind of inspired you to change your life, or was there was there any any lecture that uh, or movie that you watched from the organization that uh, really inspired you to make that extra uh, push to want to actually, you know, uh, take more upon yourself? And uh... I say at that moment when I first went, I was curious. I wanted. I knew there was a change I needed to be done. And I went there and then uh, I'll say because I started watching, I went in the middle of the Mossar series lecture. So I would say in the, the shows at the starting going live and then uh, live and um, being there in the lectures, you can feel something different and uh, learning everything yeah. and every time going there, learning something new and seeing different things. So it was that ex inspiration that brought me to really, um, you know, like, for sure, I need to make the big change and there's no turning back and that's uh, that's the route I need to go. Did you ever get any, uh, like, personal help from the rabbi? Was there ever any one-on-one -on -one time? Or uh, did he inspire you personally in any way? Yeah, so after the first time I went and I talked to my cousin, he was like, so if you need to talk to the rabbi, it's there after the shoe, you can talk to him. The first time I was like, yeah, okay, I'll talk to him. I see he's talking to different people. That first night, I didn't go and talk to him. I was like, I was a little bit shy. I'm kind of a shy guy. So I didn't talk to him that first time I went. And then I guess the, I bet it's probably the second or third time. And now, I, okay, after this deal, I'll talk to him. And um he was like, okay, so is that something you really need to do? You really want to do it? Do you, are you sure you want to do this? And I was like, yes. That so what what you hear? Why do you want to do this? So I explained it to him. I was like, okay, so if you need to, we sat together. I think one of those nights it was like we'll stay there a long time after the year to just to talk about different issues and uh, things like that. So he um he says, so if you want want to do this, I'll go ahead and send you the syllabus. And but you have to come to the year. You have to always be here. You have to keep learning. So and coming to the year is like something that will help you. Um, go on that journey that always give you strength and I don't think after that if I ever miss a shio I mean if I miss I don't remember maybe there was a good reason for it but I don't think I miss any shio from uh, from that night on so I always went and I always find something new something to use to my life so and even once a situation would come up and I need something at least one of the shio will have something that I can get to get me through that situation Oh yeah, the dad, the rabbi definitely uh, gives a lot of his time to uh, help people and answer their questions. What would you say that the uh, hardest challenge was that you had to overcome? Ben, no, I mean, we are just saying it's never easy. Um, it's really, I mean, trying to explain to family uh, different laws, different uh, because, like I said, the family was always together. And whenever they'll see you, it's like a big, uh, happy family hugs. How are you? Blah, 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 stuff like that. Whenever they have a gathering and things. So it was hard when try try to avoid people, but it can always happen. So whenever it happened, try to explain to people, also friends, different things you used to do, trying to take yourself away from certain situations. So it was really hard dealing with family and explaining to them and telling them, well, we can't do this, we can't do that. And um, yeah, it's uh, from that moment on, it's been, I feel like it's, uh, I've been avoiding a lot of people when they feel some type of way. Even though you explain mm -hmm. to them, some of them knows, but it's still like, uh, I'll say adjusting for, uh, to family and things like that, yeah. Speaking of family, you, also, you actually uh, uh, found your wife through uh, through the rabbi. He made a shidduch with, with you guys, right? The Shidduch from Heaven. You guys made that interview video. Lil Hamishi, 
signature of the Khatan. I have to sign. two kids how long did it take you from uh when you first uh spoke to the rabbi or met with him um to uh start and end your whole conversion process let's say under two years um because uh one of the things we had to work with a new big thing and stuff like that so they had also their requirements even though we learned with the rabbi with the rabbi um for about a year or so before we went to the Bedin, but I think we had to go to another year, a year and a half, maybe, or so before the whole process finished with them. So that took uh, some time, but Lombok Hashem, there's a reason for that, so we're here, so. What are some of the goals that you're pursuing right now? Goals that I'm pursuing right now. I'm trying to finish uh, one of the Masechet, one of the, it's a, it's a challenge to be the Yetzar a lot of times. So that's one of the goals, one of the very like, I mean, pressing, so to say. Not pressing, but at least you need to go through as much material and uh, learn different things and uh, try to see the accomplishment. But every page is an accomplishment, so the block is So it's not to show them finish, um, this one and continue learning more and um, and try to beat the Yetzirah every day. It's uh, That's my goal, trying to beat the Yetzirah. Whenever it comes, I'll be able to fight something to to cook him off. That's a good goal. It's a hard, it's hard. It's hard. But it's a good one. I mean, that's why we're here, right? We're here to... At least I'm standing. Bro Hashem. That's that's the goal in our lives, to fight and beat the Yetzirah that comes knocking at our door every day. Yeah. You might have thought you did it before you came back like, was like, wait, I thought you were here and I beat you. Why are you here? And like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I just uh, no, I'm here. Okay, fine. Let's go at it again. See? It's a construction building. You see, it's not, getting, it's not a one to three step. He always comes back, unfortunately. It's not fortunate. Give us more stead. Exactly. Exactly. Where do you see yourself in about 10 years from now? Five, 10 years. Learning more. Being able to look at more time to learn. And uh, be able to beat the tests that you have now and knowing that you can overcome them and they're not even a test anymore. And... Um, being stable and knowing uh, knowing that uh, whatever you are doing, it's uh, it's for Hashem and you don't have any doubts. You don't have any um, shaking ground to stay on. Nothing. Just knowing that you want to, if whether you want to sit there and learn uh, however amount of time, you can do it. And it's not like you don't have any like, oh, do I need to go to this? Do I need to go to that? Maybe uh, you just know like you want to learn. We want to learn, and then that's it. And uh, I, I don't know, just being a better servant of Hashem, being able to, um, it's just trying to be better, really. Trying to be better, trying to be uh, adding on to where you are now. Let's say 10 times more, 100 times more. So it's uh, it's uh, winning the fight. I want to see, in 10 years from now, I need to know I, I, win all, I won all the fights, and I can win any other fight that's coming, no problem. It's a good goal. Good goal. You've been about Chuva, you've been uh you converted how long has it been now? Three years. Three years and change. So with that being said then, what kind of advice would you give someone that's um 
also kind of uh, in the process of doing chuva or someone that has the chuva on their radar, you know, like they uh, they want to change, um, they want to better themselves, they want to get closer to Hashem. Um, what kind of advice would you would you would you give them or prepare them for or anything like that? You know, based on your experience or just life in general, what would you advise? Well, first of all, it's not going to be easy. You're going to have to make a lot of uh, changes, a lot of difficult decisions, a lot of um, enemies. It depends how they take it. Just be prepared for someone to be mad at you or someone to feel that you'll be trained them for whatever reason or just some um, people you care about, people you want, you know, that was family, like we were saying before, to just like think that you're abandoning them and stuff like that. And also be ready for the challenge that's coming in life, whether it's um, tests from your past or things you want to change that uh, you think you put behind, but sometimes the answer I will just bring it in a different way, trying to cover it for you. So you have to be prepared for that. Always have your eyes open and be alert and knowing that uh, whatever you're doing, you're doing it for a reason. So if you have that in mind, whatever comes right or left, you'll be able to know it's coming. You'll be able to discover it and see what it is and be able to dodge it. That's what a shame. And um, what is it? Stay focused. Listen to a lot of sharing because at the end of the day, that's what's going to help you. If you listen to enough stuff, you'll hear the rub in your ear if something happened. If anything else fell, you'll hear him you'll give you the advices. If you have enough sharing that um, you listen to, you'll find one of those advices at a certain situation that you'll be able to find um, find your answer to for you to be able to, uh, for you to, be able to dodge that um that obstacle so and uh just uh try your best try your best if you fail get back up and uh do it again and uh knowing the goal is serving hashem and getting a better future for you for your family for your soul most uh importantly and uh just uh doing what the creator asked us to do and doing it to the best of our abilities so a lot of hardships, a lot of sacrifices, uh, a lot of perseverance, a lot of fighting to try to push forward to get to the goal. Never end. It is going to end in time. So that's expected to go higher and higher. And uh, it's like a game where every level gets harder. So you just have to find the tools to win that level. So just expect that. All right, all right. They say the the, the bigger the tzaddik, the bigger the yitzah they have, right? That's great. But what the Shem will okay. be able to find a tzaddik for us to learn from him and uh, and know what that means. Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem. Okay, so there would be a final message or anything else that you'd want to share with other people. Uh, if anything, what, what would that be? For people that want to that want to, you know, do do chuva and uh, and change, change their lifestyle for the better. What would you? What would your final message to them be? Or want to share with them something that you've experienced? Maybe I've been a rabbi like Rabbi Robin Ruven to help you to be there for you and to like guide you through a process like this, or to be able to have enough tools to go through this world. With all the craziness that's going on, you need to try as best as you can to glue yourself to his uh, to his lectures, to his words. Because believe me, each and every day you will have those tests, and if you listen to enough of his uh, of his advices, you'll find the solution to it. As I mean, uh, I can be uh, I can slack sometimes in different. Uh, different areas, but I know for sure I listen to a lecture and I'll I'll get the answer and I'll say thank you for it. I think you were talking to me, so I appreciate it. I got the message. Um I'll do better next time. 
I already, I'm already doing better now. So it's, uh, it's very important to really glue yourself to the lectures and uh, pay attention, not just watch, but pay attention and take that lesson at that moment that you hear that lesson, take it into your life. If you know that it's going to be good for you tomorrow or you had the different, you had something in the past and that would be the answer. You write it down so you can know this, I need that to, to win this, this battle. So if you have like a, you're meticulous about the things that you do and the things that you hear to do it at that moment, then uh, you'll have um, a lot of success. Like I said, the things come in every single day, the, every single hour, the tests come. But if you have enough, you'll be like, sometime at a certain point, you'll be able to just not even realize anything. And you realize, oh, that was a test. Okay, back I passed it. I don't know if that was a test, but it's a uh, bit of fact. Okay. So it's like a muscle. It's like working out, right? Exactly. You lift weights, you get sore, and then you, you build up on that. Could I say it any better? So read the recommended uh, books, good people. Read good books that's going to help you. The recommended books that has the good teachings. And uh, keep yourself away from anything that would detract you. Anything from the past that you know that would protect you down, trying to stay away as best as possible. It could be difficult and hard sometimes. And if it's around, if you can't budget, you'll fall. But you have to know if you fall, at least you're not falling, not knowing that you are falling and you need to get back up. Because if you have the tool to know, oh, I'm falling, but I need to get back up. I can't stay down. Oh, wait, I feel like I'm about to fall, so I need to go back up. Then you'll be able to to get yourself out, knowing that you have the tools. Like I said, I, I feel like that's the best thing, knowing you have enough tools, enough a uh, uh, rabbi that's telling you the things that you need every single day, that's going to be the tool to help you. It's, um, I feel like it's very important. I, sometimes I feel like, okay, I have all the answers, but you don't. So you go to a lecture, you ask questions, and uh, it'll, it'll provide you the answer that you need that's going to be right for you. So attach yourself as much as possible to the Rav, and then Zot Hashem will give you strength. It'll give you strength to give you the right answers that you need for your life. But uh, basically, do the best we can Wake up every day, even though I fell at it. Wake up every day like a lion. If you, if you didn't wake up like a lion this morning, you were a little kitty. So hopefully tomorrow you'll say, maybe I'll be a bigger kitty until I become that lion to wake up. So like I said, wake up every day trying to add them to that goal and to reach the goal that and the limit that you're supposed to, you're supposed to reach. So it's all... It's a matter of uh, knowing, knowing, focusing on what you need to do and where you need to go and where you're going and where the goal is. So that will take you to to the path, you know, whatever is in the path, I have the goal where I'm going. So I have to try and avoid it and do better to avoid certain things, the obstacles, and um, because I know where my goal is, what's, the, what's behind the door or what's on the other side of the, the mountain type of stuff. Well, Elkanan, thank you very much for uh, taking the time to share your story with us. Uh, you're definitely going to receive a lot of merits in Shemaim. And uh, anything that comes uh, after this one, you're going to have a big credit for it. You're going to influence people to want to do it, Bezot Hashem. And um, yeah, me too. We all do. We all do. The whole nation of Israel, we all need it. It's tough times, uh, you know. It's getting close to, uh, you know, to Mashiach times. We don't have too much time left. So we got to do whatever we can. Try to help people and bring them back, show them the truth. And uh, it's not an easy process, but it's, it's definitely possible. And you're a very good example of uh, accomplishing that. So, Hazak And uh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the organization is giving me. And, uh, I hold my life really to the organization. It's like they kind of created me. Uh, the rabbi, the organization created me. So 
I'm the person that I am today because of uh, Zohar Hashem organization and Rabbi Aaron movement. And uh, may Hashem bless him with unlimited, a thousand million, or trillion fold, and uh, will be strong to all of us the right teaching and the lessons that we need to change our life and make our life better and get closer to Hashem. Oh, Hashem. A very special thank you to all our amazing guests who show real Avati Sled by taking the time out of their busy schedules and sharing their ups and downs with us. All for the sake of Avati Sled. May Hashem continue to bless you a thousandfold. If you enjoyed this video, you can find more of these podcasts on our website at www.bizathashem.org. If you are new to, be sure to subscribe to the channel to hear more highly influencing lectures and stories like the one you heard here today. Thank you for watching and Bezat Hashem, may we all have the merit to return to Hashem.